How's your vision? Is it working? Yes. I just... What? Mm, nothing. It's fine. My eyesight is back, thank you. What happened? Did you remember something? What happened? Did you remember something? Yes, actually, I did. Right, well, go on then. I know now why I wasn't on that list. Oh. Why weren't you? I wasn't on staff. I would come to the Gerbera Garden with the kids and go back with the same group. Meaning, I wasn't a full-time employee. I merely accompanied the children. Okay, so you're like the childminder. Tabaha said those kids were accompanied by teachers. Those weren't teachers. It was psychologists that accompanied them. Oh. I'm a children's psychologist. Oh, so were you measuring emotions in children or something? Why the need for a psychologist at an amusement park? Enabish, this is not an amusement park at all. Those kids didn't come here for entertainment. They were gravely ill and were brought here for treatment. Oh. The Gerbera Garden was a clinic. Pretty fucking weird clinic. What were they treated for? Some kind of psychological disorder. Quite severe, often fatal. But it's hard to say exactly what it was. I can't recall. Okay. It's getting weirder. You mean the transfer was their therapy? One part of it, yes. There was a whole set of measures. Body replacement was the final phase of the therapy. We also searched for parts and staged plays. They too were part of the treatment. Uh, what kind of plays? Plays? What kind of plays? I... I remember this one episode. There was a vessel in front of the stage. Kind of like a bathtub. Oh shit, it's that thing. It's still there. I saw it. Well, the kids would put M-body parts in it. Each one would bring their own part from the pavilion and put it into the bathtub. And as it filled up, the MC would combine all the parts into a single body. We're talking about the caterpillar thing on the stage, right? And what happened then? And then... There was a cloud of steam. The body would be quickly, imperceptibly replaced with a young woman's, and she would pick up the lead. Right. She would fight some giant head. And then something else would happen. I can't remember all the details. So, okay, maybe the bathtub is there and the giant head is the thing that's on stage. Like, there's definitely a giant fucking head. I don't want to fight that. I, I, I knew from day one that that looked weird. Uh, let's ask about the cubes. And the cubes? Were they also part of the treatment? The cubes, the flower beds, even the height of the pavilions. All were deliberate, mandatory elements of the same therapy. The Gerbera Garden was constructed specifically for those children. It was the only means of treating their illness, peculiar though it may have been. Yeah. The illness must have been peculiar to match. It's still hard for me to imagine what it might have been, but those kids, they evoked more than just compassion. There was something else, some other complicated, ambiguous feeling. Right, okay, well, when you know what that is, let me know. Tabaha is right. Those kids were unusual. Yes, and the amusement park was as well. Which means all arrivals had to be registered, myself included. I'll try to look for some kind of visitor's logbook or... Or what? Or what? Or death book or something? What is it? My battery. It's nearly discharged. Oh shit. Bad news. I need you to make sense of all this. In that case, Anubis, you'll need to play with those cubes some more. Oh lord. Sure thing, Ida. I'll play. Which pavilion? A moment. Hands. Wrists. There, the fuel cell. Tenth pavilion. Okay. All right, I'm off. Don't go anywhere. She's gonna let me in. So yeah, don't don't go anywhere. Oh God, excuse me. Just flailing my way out the door. That's number nine. This is number ten. Ida. Oh fuck me. Ida, 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 Ida. The illness in those kids wasn't accidental. Can you hurry up, please? Before getting sick, there was something special about them, some kind of useful quality. This quality allegedly gave them an intellectual advantage over grown-ups. 
That's great, but can you let me in? Because... I see you. Go on in. Thank you. Please, quickly. Please, quickly. Quickly, quickly. Oh, no, let me in. Fucking hell. Oh, God, it's in the floor. Get fucked. Go away. Uh, take me out of this place it's fine okay it's at this point in the game guys that the puzzles begin to get a little bit repetitive um, so this one is very similar to the original one where you're basically just collecting cubes and making platforms as the guy destroys them um, and then later ones sort of echo the original basic I think it's two models of the game that they make you play so um from this point on basically i'm gonna do a lot of skipping because it's very samey gameplay and it makes me a bit sad because i really enjoyed these games and i like the music behind them and all of that stuff but i wish there was a bit more of a feature that made each game unique because apart from the color changes there's not that much of a difference so for the sake of you guys wanting to know the story and so forth, I'm going to cut quite a lot of these games out from now on or, you know, properly cut them down. So just so you know, that's what's going to happen. We've got our battery. Bum, 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 bum. We got her a battery and now we're going to charge her up and then I don't know what we're going to do with her. But it's good. That's still a bit fucked, that dome. I don't know what's going on with that, but... Let's just get out of here. Oof. Again, it's got to load the world in, so it gets a little bit upset with life. I found out what special quality those kids had. They had exceptionally developed visual perception. Visual and aesthetic. Right. For them, the shape, colour and the like of surrounding objects was of critical importance. Some things were beautiful in their eyes, others the definition of ugly. And here's the kicker. They were always in consensus. But it was that very ability that ultimately became their plight. The particulars, however, I still do not know. Weird. I see you there. Very weird. So they were able to choose as a collective without discussion what stuff was so I guess they maybe they wanted to study it so they could see how they could harness that to, for people I, fuck knows there's no point in theorising because it's probably wrong back to the yurt we go we'll install her battery see how she's doing Buddy, how you doing? You're hanging out somewhere. I did hear you, but right. Okay, Ida. Did you bring the battery? Here it is. Let's replace it. Go ahead, but you'll need to switch me off first. All right. Okay. Here come the shakes again. Well, no way around that. Yep. Shut me down. See you in a minute. Sorry, you're not going to like this, but I can't. Can't do much about it. Right. So, in here? Yes. Is that the new one? Yes. Okay, let's see what happens. Whoa. Hello, you all right? You getting there? Two attacks in one day. I'm breaking records. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Well, did you find out anything? Yes. Okay. Did you find your number? My number? Oh, no, not yet. But I did learn what the children were treated for. Remember I told you that the shape of objects was important to them? Yeah. I do. Well, their illness was called morphophobia. Fear of a shape. Or to be more precise, an aversion to it. What kind of shape? What kind of shape? 
The human body. Oh. They couldn't stand the sight of a human body. That was their disease. The fuck? What do you mean that they couldn't stand it? They would literally get sick, vomiting at the sight of any person. Their teachers, doctors, passers-by, their own parents, even seeing each other in the mirror. Oh. What an unusual disease. Yes, which is why the treatment was likewise unusual. Now I know the purpose behind those strange activities. Playing with cubes, collecting parts, and so on. So why were they assembling an in-body on stage? Weird. To cultivate in the children a positive association with the sight of a human body. They were using those bits to independently assemble a fairy tale character, a positive character. And thanks to their efforts, a young woman would take the stage, the defender of beauty, protecting a blossoming garden from a wicked witch. Right, okay, so a little bit in how like you deal with phobias in psychology, like reinforcement, positive reinforcement. So, okay. The witch symbolized ugliness? Evidently. Beauty would triumph over ugliness, and the children rejoiced at their involvement in bringing about a happy end. Bit by bit, their repulsion toward the human body was thus dislodged from their psyches, replaced by a new mindset, which filled the human body with beauty and goodness. Oh, of course, because of the passium, you don't... Uh, of course, of course, that's why it would be so dangerous, because you'd be creating more bitter passium. They've got this horrible thing, so it's nipping the, the problem in the bud, I suppose. What were the cubes about? I see. And the cubes? What was their purpose? The cubes have an extremely simple shape. Playing in the pavilions blunted the kids' excessive sensitivity. Their psyches were being simplified so as to start sewing in them trivial categories. Good and evil, beauty and ugliness. Because their perception developed in an anomalous manner, the kids saw the world of shapes very differently in a way that grown-ups could never understand. And there was no other way to save their lives other than to make them simpler. Right. I'm still having trouble understanding. Hold on. Meyer. Oh. Penibish. My name is Ida Meyer. Oh. You remembered? I found a journal. It contains my data. Here. Ida Meyer, age 26, City of Geneva. My personal number. And a date, August 15th, 2058. What year is it, by the way? Oh, she's not going to like this. 76. Whoa. So, I'm a psychologist from Geneva, and I've been lying in Mongolian soil for 18 years. So you're from Switzerland. In a candy box. And not in soil, but in sand. Very well, in sand. And now I'm in a flower vase trying to verify my number. Only... Damn it. What? It's not working. The network interface. I can't get online. Uh, maybe the network interface doesn't exist anymore? Like, the web? I guess the vase doesn't integrate with the web. Anibish, there's another network terminal underneath the TV. It's functional, only without power. If you can power it up, I'll be able to get online. I'll try. Let's see how the wiring is done. Okay, give me a minute. Um, this thing. This, uh, new task. Put the batteries in the box under the awning. Uh, this box? No. What awning? Ah, here! This is not awning. Fuck's sake. It's not awning at all. Right, uh... Where did I find all the batteries before? Not in there, they're it's too small. Nope, 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 nope. Uh... There's one. That's two. Now where did I find the third? When I was pissing around. Where did I find it? I found it. I didn't find it there. Oh no, it's up here, isn't it? Is it up here? Or is that just the box? It's just the box. God damn it. 
Oh no, it's there. Jesus Christ, dear. Right. That's powered up. And then uh, use the remote to switch on the terminal. Oh, hey. It's sort of working, but where's the remote? God, we could be here forever. I mean, I don't know where I left the remote. It's not that. That's the fire copier. Um, also, this torch. We haven't used that yet. Probably will need it. Um, this? No? Remote, remote, remote. Where would the remote be? I can't see one on there. Is that a remote? Are you a remote? Am I a remote, Ada? Right, it took quite a bit of hunting, because I'm blind, but the remote is... there. The reason is both simple and evident. Simultaneous existence of two copies of the same person gives rise to problems we are not prepared to tackle, as clearly demonstrated by the sorrowful experience of the recent past. For now, strict prohibition on duplication and forced deactivation of existing duplicates remain the only solution to the situation. Oh. Deactivated neurocopies are retired into secure storage facilities for likely reactivation in the future when a legitimate solution is found. This is one of the cases when... Oh shit, short out. Ida? Ida? Our terminal burned down. I know, but I managed to check the number in time. Well, good job. You did? So what's the news? Are you going home? The news is bad. I no longer have originals right. There's nowhere for me to go. What? Why? I was restored. Three years ago, Ida Meyer was confirmed dead and restored from a reserve neurocopy. She currently lives somewhere in Geneva. Hey, bad luck. We don't seem to have much luck. How did she die? It says here, died in a despair toxin emission in 2058. This means you are now a duplicate? Correct. My very existence is illegal. Whoops. Well, don't fret. We'll improvise. Improvise? Sure. We'll find you a normal body with legs. With legs? Yeah. Then? Then we'll live our lives, selling flowers. Anibish, listen. When my battery runs out, I want you to put my flowers into secure warranty. Oh, hello. I mean, into a glass cell, yes? That is a secure evacuation. I understand. What? What? What I mean is, please put my neurochip in a cell which... Enemish. Into a camera of times. Or a camera of dreams. Oh god, is she... Is she broken? You alright? What's going on? What's with your voice? I don't know. A camera of tides? What are you talking about? I'm malfunctioning somehow. My thoughts are out of order. Oh god, is it because you linked up? Oh god, I'm sorry. Oh no. But I think it's over. You need repairs. Yep. I don't need anything, Anibish. I'll be put to sleep soon. Disconnected. And for a long while, I bet. So, you've decided? Yes. That is my decision. What a silly decision. So you wake up and go right back to sleep. Got it. More like, wake up. Get totally confused, then go back to sleep. What are you confused about? The explosion, for one thing. I haven't a clue how I'm connected to it. Uh, yeah. You got caught in an emission. That's just bad luck. Is it, though? No, Enibish, it's not that simple. I found another mention of my name here in the database, in the search history. Somebody was searching for information about me. That is. Well, it, it, it's a bit strange, I suppose. So what? What's so strange about that? The fact that it was the only query for my name in the entire search history made 20 minutes before the explosion. Oh, okay, now that is weird. Who made the query? A man named Mark. Mark Darren. He's listed as transfer operator. The explosion happened on his shift. There's even a recording of it. And also... 
How curious. What? What? Going by the recording, there was an equipment breakdown not long before the explosion, at around the same time the query was made. Yes, I want to know what happened there. Okay, what kind of recording? What kind of a recording is it? A report. It was saved automatically. It mentions some kind of a malfunction that, because it wasn't corrected in time, forced a modification in the transfer procedure. And no, I don't know the nature of the modification. I haven't yet figured it out. Okay. Why do you even care? Is that really important now? It is to me. Because aside from these fragments of the past, I have more fragments of the past than... I mean... Ida. She's going again. Hey. Hello? It happened again. I'm getting worse. I'll repeat. You need repairs. You need to know the cause of the problem before you can correct it. Which I do not. Uh, try that. Could it be those processing errors you've mentioned? Which errors? You know, the ones that accumulate over time. Impossible. I've just rebooted myself. They don't accumulate so quickly. Something else is happening here. Your voice is changing. If only it were just the voice. I'm at a loss. The reasons could be many. Could be my synchronizers on the fritz. I've heard of cases when the neurochip malfunctioned due to a deteriorating link with the DNA. Either that or my neurocopy is failing. But if that's the case... If that's the case, she's fucked, isn't it? What then? Nothing. Let's just hope it's the synchronizer. Let's. Then we'll replace it with a new one. Sure. There's a new one here in the small. Oh. Distance close. Give me the pavilion number. I'll go and get it. Is in six rooms soft. Oh, Jesus, okay. And, um, don't go crazy just yet. Try. Try. Yes. yes. You can do it. You're alright. 